Grab some popcorn and get comfortable because these TV shows are kicking in the closet door. When we say in our community that representation matters is not meant to be a buzz phrase. The truth is that the importance of the LGBTQ plus stories on screen can be understated. The significance of seeing ourselves on screen is essential, if not vital, in the acceptance of ourselves and our own identities. LGBTQ plus shows in streaming services have increased significantly in recent years, and there is a growing number of new shows featuring strong gay, bisexual, lesbian and trans main characters that viewers can relate to and learn from. Best of all, these TV shows cover a range of different genres, finally delivering the representation we deserve. So whatever your taste is, you know the next time you snuggle up under a blanket to watch an episode or an entire season, you are going to see queer women in all of their multifaceted glory. Welcome to Lesbian Mojo and today we're counting down our peaks of the top 10 lesbian TV shows streaming in 2021. Number 10. The Wilds Amazon Prime TV show deals with the most terrifying business of all, being a teenage girl. Hail as Lord of the Flies meets Lost meets Mean Girls, the series focus on a group of teens stranded on a desert island. Eight girls from different backgrounds will need to cooperate to survive after their plane crashes. One of those characters is the openly gay and basketball player Tony, that almost immediately clashes with religious Sherby and her accepting approach. You know who clings to religion? People like to tell themselves a nice story about who they are because deep down they're hiding some pretty fucked up shit. Annoyed by Tony's out and proud attitude, the closet pageant star can no longer hide her discomfort. I don't hate you, Tony. You get that, right? Yeah, you actually do, though. I saw your face and shit got a little too gay for you. You fucking shuddered. I'm sorry, that's hate. Brainwash into comparing queerness with evil, Sherby is understandably upset when she realizes she might not be into boys after all. Me, it's a losing fucking battle. But you're free, don't you see that? You don't have to answer to anybody, and neither do you. Not right now, anyway. I mean, you're on a deserted island, a million miles away from whatever bullshit expectations that you left behind. You know, you're free here, Shelby, and if you're not taking advantage of that, then I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Number 9. 20s. Twenties is an American single camera comedy series created by the out and proud Lena Wythe. The plot itself is semi autobiographical and follows a queer black girl, Haiti. She is very stylish, or he, or maybe that's a they, unclear. And her two straight best friends, Maria and Nia. There have been dozens of shows about people trying to make it in Hollywood, but none that look like this. Only speak when spoken to. I am so ready to go home. Excuse me, I ain't saying that. I'm sick of running errands all day. So you a writer on the show? Nah, I'm a writer's PA. I took this job so I could learn how to be a writer. What's your job description again? To make your life easier. You're not doing that right now. Lena Waithe, new comedy, is based on her own life. I'm on my way to my destiny. Can I make okay, it there? Can I make baby. it to my destiny? As an destiny. aspiring TV yeah. writer. The show is amazing, funny, smart, and easy to binge comedy that just happens to be black and queer. Sometimes it's wrong, and sometimes it's right, for every A must scene for all of us, and most definitely one of my favorites. But there comes a point when, when we exhale, Number 8, Elite. Me llamo Rebeca, con K. Pero la gente que mola le dijo que me llame Rebe. Mane Rebe, me encía, encantada. Netflix Elite is a Spanish language production designed to get you hot under the color. There is romance, betrayal, and murder. And in season 4, Elite finally delivers a sapic storyline. The Spanish teen drama has a large queer presence and it gives us all a strong dosage of LGBTQ representation. 
One of those stories is Mencia, that is immediately drawn to Rebecca. In love with her vibe, attitude and expression, Mencia tries to seduce Rebecca on every single opportunity. Rebecca, me gustas. Y sé que yo a ti también te gusto. They become friends until Rebecca realizes that Mencia is the daughter of the former CEO who has been brought in to fix up the school after a series of crimes and scandals. ¿Y tú por qué crees que me molas en ese plan? ¿Mm? Pues porque la última vez hice esto. I'm not quite sure how this works, but I have a small favor to ask. Could you please like and comment on this video? The truth is, the more likes I get, the more I'll be able to afford iced coffee. So please, if you can, hit that like button now. Thank you. Number 7. The L World Generation Q Since 2004, the L World Universe has been the one to which we have escaped, to see a cast of sapics talking, laughing, loving and breathing. Though, the L World Generation Q is more understated than its foremother. Do you think it's true about the real deal not coming around that often? I shame. I don't. I swear to God, I had no idea that was her wife. She should have come with a warning label. I've cheated too. That's true. We have Nat. You che or on Nat. You cheated on Nat, that's right. She's got trust issues. Ten years after the last season, the initial group of friends is now joined by new faces as they continue their journey through the trials of life and love in the city of Los Angeles. Just got scared and I promise. I'm gonna try not to be so scared anymore. See you and me. Number six, a typical. The show follows Sam, an autistic teenager and his family and friends. Maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe I shouldn't go. Well, Sam... Why don't you leave Edison here, where he's comfortable, but bring his container of food so that way if you miss him or you feel nervous, you can just smell it. That's not a bad idea. Your name's Izzy? Yeah. Among those family members is his sister, Casey, who has her own storyline of self-discovery. Casey and Izzy portray a relationship between two high school girls, exploring their individual identity and sexuality. For... Because I was jealous? Or... You know. in a way that is so refreshing, beautiful, touching, and most importantly, realistic. If I knew that you were gonna be all weird and that this was gonna jeopardize our friendship, I never in a million years would have told you how I felt. Because it is becoming incredibly clear that you don't feel the same way. Not taking away the greatness of this show that is trying to normalize same-sex teenage couples, what is in fact great, if not amazing. And now all I want to do is kiss you. I'm okay with that. But can we all agree that writing the same story over and over makes it seen as the norm? Are we still a couple when you go back to Newton? Yeah, of course. And it doesn't give us the full and diverse representation we deserve. My mom isn't here. Do you want to stay? Yeah. Okay. Number five, and plus. The show centers around the everyday tribulations of a young girl called Anne that lives in Amsterdam as she works her way through to a nine to five job that she clearly dislikes. The plus in the title refers to the woman she forms relationships with over the years. Each episode shows a snapshot of Anne and someone else who is significant in her life. Oh, altijd fijn om je ex tegen te komen terwijl je eruit ziet alsof je een week lang je huis niet bent uit geweest. Whether it is a brief affair, a meaningful ex or just a new friend. The show explores all the different reasons why a relationship might not work out and also the reason why. 
Trust me on this and give this underrated show a chance. And prepare to laugh, cry, despair and wail along to figure it out how to feel happier. And find that meaningful relationship we are looking for. Oh, hey. Oi. <laughs> oh. Oh. Shit. The show is funny, moving and will keep you engaged until the very last minute of every episode. Number 4. Dickinson The show tells the story of the real-life writer Emily Dixon, brought to life with a modern approach and sensibility. She's a poet, a daughter and a total rebel, highlighting Emily's determination to become the world's greatest poet. I always love your poems, but I can't be your only reader anymore. You need to share your writing with the world. Let's be honest. The main reason why so many of us watched it in the first place and took a particular interest in the show was because of Emily's sexuality and her relationship with childhood friend Sue Gilbert. What is it, Sue? Just say it! Is it I'm in love with you? I don't believe you. It's true. It's not true. Nothing you say to me is true. You're not even Sue anymore. You're a, you're a new person, a fake person. I don't even recognize you, and everything you say to me is a lie. Emily, I love you. Stop lying to me! I love you! That's right, Emily Dixon was a lesbian. I love season one so much that I got nervous before the second season was out. But the truth is, the season two is even better. Full of humor, full of queerness, and full of spirit. A show that is worth adding to your list. I could die happy right now. Not me. I feel sorry for the dead today. Emily. Yeah. When I'm with you, that is the only time I feel alive. Number 3. Euphoria The show follows the story of a group of high school students as they navigate through love and friendship in a world full of trauma, drugs, sex and social media. One of those stories follows the troubled life of a 17 years old Rue, a drug addict fresh from rehab, with no plans to stay clean. Circling in Rue's orbit is Jules, a transgender girl searching for where she belongs. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why don't you kiss me? I kiss you. No, why don't you like kiss kiss me? Um, I mean, do you want me to like kiss kiss you? I want you to want to kiss me so bad that you don't even ask. The series tangles the teenage landscape of substance in haze parties and anxiety-ridden day-to-day life with empathy and brutal honesty. It is so unusual to see teen sexuality presented in this diverse way. Are you, um, are you in love with me? Number two, The Hunting of Bly Manor. You, you could come back. Tonight. Yeah, tonight. The show tells the story of a young American a pair hired by a man to look after his niece and nephew at the family country house after they fall into his care. The gardener did not even introduce herself to the new old pair. She barely acknowledged her at all simply treated her as if she'd always been there. The truth is, The Hunting of Bly Manor isn't a ghost story. It is a beautiful lesbian love story with ghosts. One year became two. And from two, it spread into an endless time. So it seemed. Three, four, five years would pass. 
and it is so tender, romantic, tragic and new. Danny, why is there... Here's the thing. You're my best friend. And I don't know how much time we have left. But however much it is, I want to spend it with you. I won't lie, I was nervous about Blaine Manon. I'm constantly going on about the lack of positive representation and horror. And this show is everything I could have hoped for. And more, so much more. For more sapic and queer inclusive content, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to Lesbian Mojo and ring the bell to support this channel. Number one, Gentleman Jack. Have you ever kissed him? No. Have you? Is a modern lesbian tale trapped in the 19th century world. If nothing, we love Gentleman Jack for the reminder that you don't need dating apps or lesbian festivals to find love. I thoroughly intend to live with someone I love. Miss Lister. Miss Walker. The show is based on the life of the real Anne Lister, sometimes described as the first modern lesbian. Lister's legend has been preserved in her 4 million word diary, which details her business, relationships, day life, and many of her love affairs with women. You know, if you asked me to marry you again, I wouldn't say no. Mm. She was obviously not the first gay woman. But would you say yes? Yes. And while lesbian period dramas tend to fail in cinema, this show was able to capture this beautiful lesbian tale. I love you, Anne. I'm in love with you. And the fascinating historical life of Anne Lister. Don't hurt me. I'm not as strong as you think. Let's be honest, in recent years, Netflix and other streaming services have taken over our homes and give us endless entertainment at our fingertips. Diverse queer female experiences are far from dominating TV, but thanks to them, we have a source of inclusive LGBTQ content, and these titles are a great start. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and thank you so much for watching.